Okay, we're just making some mittens here. Or, well, right now we're making the mitten pattern, but um, anyways, <clears throat> I didn't draw any, or I didn't write any um, measurements on here prior, but we'll measure here. I just did this kind of plate. I've got a compass too, but I uh, forgot it at my dad's house, so. Um, and then, okay, so from about the center of that, it's about three inches down to the first line. I just drew that line. I think I probably just figured on three inches down, but it's probably about, yeah, it's three inches of curvature. This is just under six inches wide, so three inches is center right there so that's the center okay so three inches on the other side so then all the way from the top down to this first line where that's the line that if you were on the palm well it really just helps for making these because that's that's the thumb there by the way i watched um sass hunting or saskatchewan hunting um he made a video a real good pretty good video on doing this here um, making the mitten pattern and I just went off of that and his instructions are kind of tough to follow so I kind of just like laid my hand out there and figured on what I wanted and whatever so anyways for me I made that first line down seven and a half the second line eight and three quarters or um, one and three quarters inch in between um, I think, let me make sure, yeah, there's actually just over an inch, um, and then, so then right here, it's three inches, then I was gonna go farther out, or I was gonna go longer, it was gonna be about to here, and that's what I would typically do, but I've got one raccoon hide to make this, and it's not a extraordinarily big raccoon, so, um, but that's what it, how it worked out, so we'll see what we comes up with here. But then this is two and a half inches, and it flanges out from three inches to three and three quarter inches, AKA all the way across, seven and a half inches. So, all the way across is seven and a half inches. And then for these, because then I've got these that I drew, I just put this, so like for this one, see I just copied this onto this paper. And then actually I made this one first. So I just drew this whole thing out and then took it off and then kind of followed the guidelines on how to make this thumb. Anyhow, how I made this thumb is it is in total four inches from this line. Yeah, four inches from this line, tall, four inches. And then you go down three and a quarter inches. And then you go down three and a quarter inches right there. And that's where then you make this. And then right in the center of that 
is one inch. So this is um, three inches. So right in the center of three inches, one and a half inches. It's one and a half. It's supposed to be one inch, one inch tall. One inch right there. Three and a quarter to here. Three and a quarter. And then the whole length, I did four inches. Okay? So then I just took it there and kind of rounded that off. I'd really recommend getting a compass. It's a lot easier. Make a lot of nicer things with it. But then it's just the same flange right there. And then with this one, all I did was I traced this onto a piece of paper. Onto the piece of paper. And then I took this and matched the lines up and drew it on there. Okay? So then you'll have it folded over and it'll be you know thumb it'll be like that see okay so now we're going to take these and we're going to draw them onto this piece of paper here or onto this cardboard because it's a lot easier to take the first time I did this, or it wasn't making mitts, but it was making a hat. I didn't draw it on a cardboard. Tried to just put plain paper on there. Don't try and do that for the love of Pete. <laughs> it is tough. You just don't get as good of measurements and everything. All your hard work and making all the accurate measurements and everything just goes right down the drain. Now I've got that one drawn out, and just gonna draw the the rest of these out, and then cut them out, and then I'll tape these together just to double check and make sure that everything is. Or I won't cut these out yet. I'll take these and tape them all together, and see if it becomes the myth that I want. So stay tuned. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, you guys. Um, just drew them all out on there and taped this up together and ended up putting it on. And mind you, paper isn't very flexible or whatever, you know. But ended up putting it on and didn't like it seemed a little too tight just right around there I mean I didn't tape it but um it was pretty tight right there and just to make sure that I had enough room I added another half an inch on to there so that's this this was the original line this one here this more inwards one then I just took it and I measured half an inch out and then drew it all in on all three pieces on the thumb side. So now I will have to remember to use this so that it matches everything as the um, actually I'm going to 
fix that a little bit. But then I just kind of sketch those in and everything. But I'll have to remember to use these as on the, or like just to make sure that the gray side is up and everything. So I'm gonna cut these out and then I'm gonna cut, actually I'm gonna be going to town and I'm gonna pick up some lining. So um, I'll just cut these out and then later on today I might be able to start cutting or to cut them out, trace it on there and cut them out and start sewing. So, but I'm, I've got to get some liner, so I'm going to get some liner today because then I'll sew the liner. My thought is I'll sew the liner directly onto the fur side and then onto those as well. So, or like just go all the way around them there. So, I'm going to try doing that. I'll see what kind of liner I get if I get some sort of like cheap skin or something, then I'll just substitute it for this, or I'll, I'll see what happens. So I might just end up making the liner separate, but I'm not going to do much, too greatly much until I have the liner and know what I'm looking at. Okay, so stay tuned. We'll be back in a bit. Okay, we're about to sew up this one seam here. This is the thumb right there, and this is the... Um, like that's the part that'll go back up on your arm. This will be the like palm area and everything. So then we just want to line the two seams up here and but any excuse me. Um, here's what you'll need you'll need needle, this is artificial sinew or thread um just leather thread and then i've got some pliers here and then i haven't used pliers for it before but i'm going to give it a shot and then you'll need a thimble too to poke it through or i'm going to try using pliers for that too and then you'll need a one of these paper clip things here so that um you can hold the two pieces together. And then always remember, when after you sew this, um, uh, after you sew this, this is gonna be the inside. This edge that you sew is gonna be the inside edge, okay? So remember that. And now I'm gonna put this just put this clip on here like that. I'm oh, sorry. Just get ourselves a good length of thread here. Because you can always use some of it on the next uh, seam, but it doesn't look as nice if you put two or if you've got a knot right in the middle of it, it's just not as easy. And just thread it through there. And I've got, with this new kit I just got, I've got all these different needles, but I need a sharp one. This one's pretty sharp, I think. Yeah, pretty sharp. But then just what I do, if I've got a long length of thread like this, so I double it over, not all the way, but almost all the way. So then you don't have to pull like that arms, you don't have to pull your whole arms length of thread through it. You've only got to pull out half as much. So then I always just do a double knot here, double overhand. And then Right about here, right about there, we've got to do our first 
seam. So I'll show you how to do the first seam, then I'll stitch all the way around it and end right there. Okay, so I'll show you, actually I think the first one should be right about there. Yeah, but, okay, and then I've got these little things too. I've been known to stab myself a good few times. Or I have stabbed myself. I've used these before, but I got a new kit over Christmas and I haven't done a heck of a lot of sewing since then or I haven't I haven't sewed it. Um I haven't I just haven't used the kit. So now we just go like that. And this is gonna be awkward because I always sew between my legs and I've never sewed buckskin before, so okay. Okay. Change of plans. I'm just going to sew this up here. And then I'll show you, give you the gist of it once I'm done. Stay tuned. Okay, just finished stitching this up here. So on this end, this is the end we started on. This is the end we um, ended on. Anyways, right there, you just put the, just take the needle, stick it through once, bring it all the way through to about an inch away from your knot, then stick it through there again and pull it all the way tight, okay? And then this buckskin ended up being a lot tougher than I thought it, than I assumed it was going to be or thought it was going to be, so I've got this thing right here that's just got this nice handle on it so I just took that and for every hole just shoved that through there so that ended up working out all right so and then on the end you can see or for all the stitches just went through it and then um let's see let me get a piece of string so I just went through the hole and then I would take that. You guys aren't going to understand what I'm saying. But <laughs> um, basically just sewed it like a typical, like you typically sew things. So now we're going to, I have not looked at this and seen what it is like. So um, we're just going to open it up here. Hopefully, turns out. Uh, I don't like that. Nope didn't turn out Good. I think I didn't sew it far enough away from the edge there but you can see that's basically what we're going for oh, crud. come on man I'm gonna have to go back and redo that but you can see that's basically the glove that we're going for. So I guess I'm going to go back and redo this. So, okay, stay tuned. Okay, I know it probably hasn't been a very long time for you guys, but it's been like an hour and a half, two hours for me. I kept messing up on one of the palm or on one of these, got them both done. 
I ended up with two right hands, and then I redid it, and then I had to redo it again. <sighs> it's been a struggle, but never made gloves, never worked with buckskin, but that isn't, I just wasn't paying attention to minor details, but, um, so now I'm gonna, um, I suppose start sewing them onto the fur. So, stay tuned for that. Okay, just finished stitching up these mittens here. Look at that. That's pretty darned awesome, I think. Doing pretty good. I think they're pretty darn nice. They're actually ended up being a little big on me. I've got like size XL hands. But, um... We'll see what that's like after I put the liners in. So this one has some of the mane on it. That's the mane right there. This one's just all good, nice back fur right there. And so this one's a little tough up towards the front there. Because, well, it's the mane partially and just is tough so hopefully that'll wear in good but yeah it's real nice so um next clip you'll see is um if oh yeah if you guys want to see how i did those all the stitches and everything like that let me know and i'll show you but otherwise the next clip you'll see is um, will be, um, me stitching up the, or it'll, it'll be stitching up the polar fleece. So, I got some of that on order, and it should come in pretty quick, and then that's the next clip you'll see, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already. Okay, so this is a whole different setting of compared to what you guys were just at but now we're in my teepee a thousand miles away from where we were in the last clip so and a week or two later so probably just a week but okay so i just took these cut it all out out of polar fleece navy is this i don't know if i think that's black it's either black or navy blue it look like to you guys looks like black to you guys but yeah it's probably black but um then we're just gonna just gonna take needle and thread and start sewing them together and i'm not gonna i was gonna sew it right onto there but i'm gonna onto the gloves but i'm gonna make them removable so you can wash them and do whatever else with them so yeah, the piece of polar, the polar fleece I bought off Amazon, it's only $10 and it's big section is like from there to there to there on the floor to there on the floor. And yeah, so now I'm just going to start sewing it together and give her some. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, we've got this all sewed up here. Um... Just basically use the same stitch as when we were putting the other ones together there. But, um, yeah. So, let's see how this fits. Put this camera on the wrong side, didn't I? What I didn't think about, should the seams be on the inside or on the outside? But see, then we got the glove here. I've still got to do up the other one. You can see there's just parts laying a boot. Okay, just a second. Let me get this on. And there we go. Got it on there. It's real nice and comfy and everything. So that's nice. Look at that. 
Yeah. Okay. And then you can slide it off and uh, slide it back on. Except for it's hard to do with one hand. Like a Muppet character. <laughs> okay. Well, get this other one together here. I don't know when I'll do that. But whenever. I'll find some time and do it. And yeah. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. Okay. We've got the liners in both of these. And I forgot to do an ending scene earlier. So I was just editing this video and gonna make one up quick but yeah I think they turned out pretty nice it seems and should work well but yeah nice the lining is good and cozy and a bit they're actually a bit big for me but it's all right yeah so I think we're gonna yeah end this video here. Thanks for watching everybody. Happy trails!